Douglas Fraser, ex panel member from the Grand Adjustment Panel. Last summer, the city chose to eliminate the panel and change a bunch of rules on the rent control or rent adjustment for the manufacturing home parks. They did a good job this time versus the time before. They've actually identified all the capital improvements, said these are them, this is good, this is not, such as tree trimming is not a capital improvement versus repair of a building is. So they, they actually defined all those. One thing they did was eliminate the panel of five members of the community and they've gone to a contracted hearing officer who now hears the appeals and, and make the decision. This was in October 10th that they awarded, the city council awarded the contract to a law firm out of Orange County. Then the council said, well, we don't like the travel time that's in the contract because they were giving unlimited travel time and the law firm wanted $280 an hour for, for the hearing officer, plus they wanted $280 an hour for the travel time all the way, no matter what the traffic problem was. So the council told them, we need to limit that, not just giving them open end travel time. So it took them to January 3rd, or the end of the year, to negotiate back with the law firm about the travel time. And then on January 3rd, they finally signed the contract with the hearing officer. In the meantime, we at, at the Caravilla have petitioned and are waiting for this hearing officer to call the hearing meeting. The, during the summer, the city council also, or during the last year, they, they put an overlay on three parts that are senior parts qualified for the state and now the city has put an overlay or a code in there enforcing a senior status on these three parts that were already senior status according to the state. But the city actually boosted the percent of a resident over 55 to, to 90%, as you can see up there. And the three parts are Greenbrier East and West, Canyon Palm, and Tierra Park. So those contracts or new leases are going to be updated and increased until they get to 90% of the resident being over 55. And the city staff would ask how is this going to be enforced and, and they answered that the city code enforcement will be responsible for making sure that goes through. And the landowners are supposed to self govern themselves and give all the new leases to the city to review, but nobody's going to be able to enforce it unless the neighbor from one part, from one house, goes to the city and says, hey, this happened, and then the city's enforcement officer go out and inspect, and by then you've already signed a contract for a new lease, and it's going to be a real hard enforcement program. Okay. Caravelle residents have petitioned for a hearing, and this is I'll get you back. <laughs> okay, I pushed you. Anyway, according to the rules, the hearing officer has 90 days to make a decision after he receives the petition. Well, the hearing officer did not receive the petition until after January 3rd because the contract had been signed until January 3rd. So the petition that Caravilla put in it has been waiting and now most likely they have received it. So 90 days from that is either going to be the end of March or 1st of April. So we're not going to get a decision for three more months. The city's supposed to send out a 15-day announcement when the first hearing meeting is going to happen. So that hasn't happened yet, so we know it's going to be at least two more weeks before we even go to the first hearing. 
then these are just points of our petition and this is going to be an interesting hearing because the hearing officer is brand new and the rules are brand new and, and we're going to see whether they apply to to agree with the rules or whether they, the hearing officer is going to compromise for the landowners. In the notice it says the residents are to be provided no later than October 1st. Well, we received our notice October 7th in the mail. So I know they're going to argue that they put it in the mail two days earlier. It's a post office problem, but we received it. And it doesn't say received, it says provided, which means available for use. So that's our biggest argument. Hopefully the hearing officer will agree with us and dismiss the whole thing. The increase that they requested, they hid a utility cost in it, so it was more than 2.2%. And the base rent is going to be more than 2.2%. Government assessment, they calculated them wrong, so we're going to try to show the hearing officer that they calculated them wrong. This is the capital improvement. They did give us a driveway cost, but we're going to argue that the California code says the driveway cost is for the manager. In the Santa Clarita rules, they denied it last year, so they're supposed to not even come back and appeal it this year. They're supposed to go to the courts. We'll see how that goes. And in the new rules, the residents were supposed to give a 30-day notice on any capital improvements so they could be watching them. We didn't get that. And due to poor maintenance is why the capital improvement was done. Permits were not obtained. The costs, they contracted with their in-house company and those costs were outrageous. And then they want to charge us six and a half percent interest on for the capital improvement the cost of the capital improvement. Well, nobody, you can get a house loan for less than that now, so we're arguing that there's no reason for that high interest rate. Now this one is gonna really hit the city hard because for the last couple of years, the city staff have been writing reports on the hearings that have been unprofessional and biased and, and, and helping out the, the landowners. So in our hearing, we in our petition, we wrote that we want these staff members that did all this bias and unprofessional writing to be eliminated from any involvement in our hearing. Well, we'll see if the city staff applies for that or not. And then reduction in service. This was rewritten into the new rules last summer versus taken out two years ago. So one of them is guest parking. We're going to request for reimbursement on it. The street sweeper that used to come by once a week has not been there for a year. And our laundry, laundry room, they reduced from six to four units. And we're going to ask for reimbursement. So as the hearing officer has to decide all this, we'll see if, if this is any better than approaching the panel. And we'll also be able to, since the hearing officer is a contracted person in the city versus an elected panel, then the rules of appealing to the city council are different now because the city council hired this hearing officer. So we can actually, if the hearing officer interprets the rule and makes a decision that's not according to the rules, then we can go to the city and appeal because the, now the city council is the one that's hired the contract. So we'll have to see how that works too. Anyway, any questions on what's going on up there? Very good. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you, guys. You'll like that. Oh, <laughs>